The informant, room two, top floor, Rhetoric House, Maynooth University. A statement by Dr. Raoul McLaughlin, August 2015. All stories like the one I have just read are full of unexplained occurrences, and many early Irish manuscripts from medieval times preserve strange and confusing accounts. But of course, they represent the beliefs of a people who lived long ago and before our age of reason. Now we are rational people in a modern age, and I for one do not believe that spirits or ghosts can haunt the living. If you glimpse something unexplained in the dim light, then stand firm, retrace your steps and look again. For it is often a trick of the light or a misperception. It is a crow perched on a window ledge, or a crumpled coat thrown over a high-backed chair. Or perhaps the curtain has merely been swept aside in such a way that it resembles the outline of a figure standing mournfully at a darkened window. I have often found that a calm and sensible mind will produce reasonable explanations for such phenomena. However, there was one experience that I had a few years back that I am at a loss to explain. It happened when I was at Maynooth University. The Classical Association of Ireland had their annual summer school at the campus. Every year, the organization meets at a different center of learning within Ireland. And on this occasion, it was Dublin who decided to host the seminar at Maynooth. All the branches were in attendance, with representatives from Cork, Sligo, Limerick, Galway, and of course, me from Belfast. Maynooth is a small university town, about 20 miles west of Dublin. Despite its proximity to the city, Maynooth still has the appearance of a tranquil Irish town, especially between semesters, when the classrooms are closed and most of the students are absent. It was mid-August when I arrived at the small railway station located in the green countryside of Kildare. Now, Maynooth is a little different from other Irish universities. It was established at the close of the 18th century as a seminary to train Catholic priests. This was a time just after the rebellion of the United Irishmen had been brutally suppressed. And those that lived in fear of persecution, oppression and reprisals. The clerical centre within the college still retains the look of old churches with tall imposing buildings constructed from heavy tomb grey stonework surrounded by well-kept lawns. Amongst these lawns stands a solitary yew tree, massive and malevolent. It is said to be the oldest living tree in Ireland, more than 800 years in existence, and it is nicknamed the Silken Thomas. Through cuttings and slips, it is the source of countless yew trees in graveyards across Ireland, Europe and the wider world. Most of the buildings on the old campus were constructed in the mid-19th century, a time of great turmoil and trauma for the Irish nation. The Great Hunger, the Famine, was about to come. Now in 2015, the Classical Association had their summer school in Maynooth. Each year a different theme is chosen for our classical seminars. Now if I recall, our lectures that year were characterization in Sophocles, is Euripides still relevant? And what makes a real Medea? They were held in the Renahan Hall with its robust timber ceiling and large arched windows looking out into the quiet grounds. But the long echoing corridors have the hushed atmosphere of a church or chapel. Like many old campus buildings, little has changed in decades. To walk down these corridors might be stepping into the past another era, another world. There is only the occasional reminder of our century. In the modern green glow of the exit signs above dark vestibules leading to enclosed courtyards. What made me particularly uneasy was the scrutiny from lines of portraits. These depicted stern-faced university authorities, deans, chancellors and churchmen, dressed in academic gowns or church vestments, with dates that ranged across the centuries. But as we waited outside one of the lecture rooms, 
my attention was caught by the lists of students who had studied at the college. Each plaque was dated and listed familiar Irish surnames from Donegal and Western Ireland. I was looking for McLaughlin's when I noticed that not all students had finished the course. They had dropped out for one reason or another. But as I looked at the names, one of my Sligo colleagues leant in and said, Them's the ones that committed suicide. Have you not heard of the Maynooth ghost room? I don't believe a word of it, I said. There's no such thing. But Helen said, Indeed there is. The ghost room. It's a real place in the history department. Ask anyone from Maynooth. It's haunted by a demon. And, and there are bloodstains on the floor that won't wash out, and footprints of a man or cloven beast burnt into the wood. It's room two, on the top floor of Rhetoric House. Dermot added, Sure, it's a photocopy room now. Back away with you. You're having me on, I said in disbelief, and thought no more about it, for the time being. But that evening, while walking off a more than generous meal, I find myself on the grass alongside Rhetoric House. It's a stone building of Georgian appearance, situated on the far side of the old college. Its facade faces the towers of the main entrance of St. Patrick's College, across a vast lawn. Overcome with curiosity, I looked into the ground floor windows of the building. I saw what appeared to be classrooms and teaching areas, but then I realised that the main entrance door onto the portico was standing open. No one was about. So, I thought to myself, photocopying room, eh? Top floor, room two. Well, we'll soon see about that. So in I went. The bottom corridor was tiled in large squares with a semblance of a cross in the centre of each. To my left, was an unexpectedly narrow staircase leading to the upper floors. It was twilight, but there was still enough daylight left to make my way up. I arrived at the top corridor. This must have been student accommodation at one time. Now for room two. Can I help you? came a voice from behind me. Are you a lost soul? And I turned to see an elderly priest in an old-fashioned cassock, standing in the corridor behind me. I decided on the truth. I'm looking for the photocopier in room two, Father. Ah, he said. I don't know about that. But room two is now an archery. We have a statue of St. Joseph there. We changed its use recently, and I'll tell you why. It begins with a suicide, which, as you know, is a mortal sin. The resident in that room killed himself one night. According to some, there were terrible screams, and he used his razor on his own throat. Forgive me if I'm not too particular about the details. The next inhabitant of room two felt irresistibly compelled to do likewise, and again, according to some, he did and again with a razor. The third occupant, to avoid a similar impulse, to use his razor upon himself, jumped through the window into the rhetoric yard. He broke some bones, but he saved his own life and his own immortal soul. Thereafter, nobody could be induced to use this room, but a certain priest volunteered to keep vigil in the room for one night and in the morning his hair had turned pure white. I do not care to relate what his harrowing experiences were as he wrestled with the demon. But ever afterwards, he walks the corridor to stand between the students and the horrors of eternal damnation. Now, he said, go on your way, my son. It's getting dark. You'd better leave and have a safe return to your own accommodation. And with that, he walked on past me and entered room two. He was right, it was getting dark, and I could not see any light switches within reach. 
so I made my way back out the same way I had come in. Outside, in the clear night air, the moon was rising. Approaching me was a caretaker, or a grindsman, with a torch and a bunch of keys to lock the main door of Rhetoric House. I stepped forward and told him that there was somebody still inside. I described the old priest to him, but he disagreed. Oh no, he said, there is no one here of that description. Besides, the college is empty for the summer. There's only the seminar folk here, and they're not in this part of the campus. And then he firmly locked the large front door. As the stars were coming out, I made my way back to the modern halls of residence. That next day, I searched the faces in those old portraits that hung in the corridors, but neither there nor ever afterwards have I been able to find any trace of the identity of my informant. This statement is by Dr. Raul McLaughlin, August 2015. The informant, room two, top floor, rhetoric house, Maynooth University.